Hey everyone, we're gonna be creating one of my favorite things from the Animal Crossing universe, gyroids. Gyroids? Gyroids? Gyroids sounds weird. I don't like gyroid. Gyroid though I like. I'll upload the gyroids finished blend file and any future gyroids to our Patreon. Let's just jump right into it. Making the main body shape is pretty simple. Create a new circle object. I use 16 vertices. In edit mode, extrude and scale circles. Use Ctrl R to add edge loops as needed. In the modifier tab, add a subdivision modifier. This will help us create a smooth shape as we add geometry. If you look at a reference pick, this edge is sharp, which we could do several ways. But the easiest way is to just select and duplicate this loop, and then extrude in shape from there. It'll be easier to see how it's looking if we select all and shade smooth. Just try your best to replicate this shape. Extrude some loops into the neck. When you're happy with the shape, go into object mode and apply the subdivision modifier. So for this particular object, this seems like an excessive amount of geometry. So let's hold Alt and Shift while selecting every other vertical edge loop. And now hit X and choose Dissolve Edges. And that feels considerably better. All right, let's make the arms now. It's pretty simple, add a circle, get it positioned over here, and extrude out an arm. Select all and shade smooth. Fill in this cap however you want, I just created a face and divided it with J. Add a mirror modifier. And here's our gyroid body shape. Now we need to set up the lighting and the materials. Let's use Eevee as the render engine. Under the World Properties tab, by the color field, click this little yellow circle and choose Environment Texture. Click Open and navigate to an HDRI texture. If you don't have any HDRIs, go to polyhaven.com, I'll put a link in the description, they have free HDRIs. I'm using their HDRI called Blinds. If you're in Perspective and Render View, you can see the HDRI in the viewport. In the Render Properties tab, you can set the background to be transparent. Now let's set up the materials. In the Material tab, or Shader Editor, click New, and give it a name. I'm going to speed through setting up this material, and pause at points to talk about what's going on. First, let's set up a base color, which seems to be a blue-gray straight on, and a light blue along the edges. So a layer weight, color ramp, mix node setup does the trick to replicate that appearance. Here's the two colors I used. The material also looks like it's sculpted a bit, like pottery or metal or something. We can replicate that appearance by using a texture coordinate, mapping, noise texture, and bump node connected to the normal input of the shader. It looks like garbage right now, so drop the strength significantly, and adjust the scale. If we look at the reference pick again, let's create this band pattern. A wave texture with a texture coordinate and mapping node is the beginning of setting up the pattern. Adding a gradient texture here, set to radial, gets it even closer. Most of these settings will work, but I switched from bands to rings and spherical. We want to set up this material so that it rotates on the Z axis based on the Z location. To do that, add separate and combine XYZ nodes and connect to the rotation. It's not quite rotating the right way, so add a math node set to multiply here, and adjust the value until the angle looks correct. Adjusting the scale on the wave texture will adjust the size of the bands and a color ramp will give even more control over the size and shape. The white bands will be where the darker color blue is added.
Connect the original color to a mix RGB node set to multiply, and use a blue in the bottom color field. Connect the new radio wave texture to the factor. This is what we've got so far. Now we need to make the bands start and end where we want them. It's pretty simple. Duplicate this node, connect the Z to the bottom color, drop a color ramp here and adjust the color stops to look like this. Increase the factor on the multiply node to 1. This color ramp represents values from 0 to 1 and we're inputting the object's Z location. So the bands show up from 0 to 1 on the Z axis. Changing where the bands are is pretty easy. Tab into edit mode and hit N to bring up this side menu. Make sure you're on the item tab. Select a vertex on this edge loop and take note of the Z location. Drop a math node here, change the value to the Z location times negative 1. Or in other words, subtract the Z location. Now duplicate the math node and switch to divide, drop it here. Select a vertex on the Z location where you want the bands to end. Add a subtract node and subtract this new location from the first. Connect to here. And there we go. So now let's make the face. There's a lot of ways we could do this, but I'm going to unwrap the faces where I want the gyroid's face to be. Make sure you're in front ortho view. Select these faces. Head into the UV editor. Hit U and choose Project from View, Bounds. Let's stack these faces in the UV editor, select half of them and scale by negative 1 on the X axis, then move by 0.5, also on the X axis. Head back into the shader editor and add a new material slot here. Put the original material in this slot and duplicate it by hitting this button. Name it something wild, like face. Select and delete all of these nodes. Reselect all of your face faces. Select and assign the second material. Drag this factor to zero for now to get it to blend with the rest of the body. I'm going to real quick add a few nodes. Alright, so we've got our standard nodes here. Make sure you're using the UV socket on the texture coordinate. Adjust the mapping node and color ramp to get these eyes to look correct. Add a reroute node here by shift right click dragging. And let's connect it to our objects normal like this with a mix RGB node set to multiply. Now just mess around a bit to get the eyes scaled and positioned. Select all four of these nodes and duplicate them. Add a mix RGB node, set it to multiply. Adjust the color ramp and mapping node to create part of the mouth. Add another multiply node and duplicate all four of these nodes again. Now create the second part of the mouth. Once again, just kind of mess around, adjusting everything until you get it looking correct. That looks pretty good, so let's make the nose. It took me a little while to build, so I'm just going to speed through it and we'll look at it when it's done. So here it is. We've got two mapping nodes so that you can adjust the scale without it moving all over, and here I used a spherical gradient to build a capsule. These two values slide the top and bottom half of the sphere around. This color ramp creates the normal gradient that we've added to the other normals here, and this color ramp is the factor of this add node. Make sure the factor gradient is set to constant, and the bump node here is inverted. If your nose looks like this, select all in edit mode, hit alt n, and choose recalculate outside. As always, feel free to make any adjustments, it might help to add some shapes to act as guides if you want to get your gyroid more spherical or something. What do you think? Looks pretty close to me. I love the way gyroids look, so I'll probably make a couple more of them, hopefully you'll find it helpful. To make these materials game ready, we'll need to bake them to a texture, so we'll probably do that in a separate video after we make a couple more. Gyroids will always have a special place in my heart. The excitement of digging one up after the rain, and then having them accompany my favorite KK Slider song, or making a horrifying gyroid cacophony in my basement. Good times. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. As always, please like, subscribe, and leave us a comment on what you'd like to see us make. If you'd like to help the channel grow, share our video. 
The finished blend file for this project is available on our Patreon for free, in case you want to take a gander at the nodes and geometry or whatnot. Okay, goodbye!